Whoa, the light from outside your window just got brighter. It's 9.30 in the evening, and you have a huge exam coming up tomorrow. You peek outside to see if your neighbors use their floodlights again. But they're outside looking up in the sky. You stick your head out and notice that the moon got a lot bigger, double in size. You run outside and ask people what's going on. But they don't have a clue either. You take a picture of it and post it on social media. You view your feed and see that everyone is talking about it. The dark sky is brighter because the moon has more real estate to reflect light from the sun, making the light more intense. You can feel a slight imbalance while walking. Every time you take a step, it feels like you're walking lighter than usual. Because the moon became so large, its gravitational pull became stronger, so gravity became weaker. Suddenly, you look below you and feel your socks are wet. You run and hop on the top of a car and see that there's water flooding your neighborhood. Everyone tries to find higher ground or run back to their houses. This isn't a fire hydrant that busted and is spewing out water. This is ocean water seeping in. You're confused and lose your balance. You slip and fall in the water as it rises. Some people are in their cars, but they can't drive anywhere because of the water. You live near the ocean, but there has never been a tsunami or any flood reports in your whole life. There are no reported earthquakes around the area, so something strange is happening. You run back to your house, trying to see if you can get out your old inflatable raft to help you with the flood. The only problem is that you need to inflate it but don't have your pump. You inflate it with your mouth at first, but it'll take forever to pump it up. You search around your house for an alternative and find your hairdryer. You plug it in and inflate the raft as much as you can until you use your mouth to do the rest. The water level rises by every second and has now entered your house. You pack up a bag with a good flashlight, some food, and thermal blankets. You go downstairs and see that the water is now at your knees. You keep walking until you reach the door. When you step outside, the water pushes you left and right since the waves are very harsh. Since gravity has changed, it's not easy to swim around. You get your raft ready and use it to float yourself down the current in your street. It doesn't help that the water is freezing, and you're in the middle of February. After a while, you reach the highway where water is coming directly from the beach. You manage to get on a high surface and take out your phone. You kept it in a protective compartment in your bag for safety. You only have 15% battery left, but you brought your power bank. You call your family to see what's going on, but they too have no idea. You venture into the forest and try to spot an old cabin you used to visit as a child to see if you left your old bicycle there. After a few minutes, you find it and bike across the mountain to escape the flood. You can't seem to balance yourself since the gravity is affecting you. Some scientists sit around with laptops and spreadsheets, attempting to understand what's happening. Everyone is shouting and throwing out random solutions, but nothing seems to make sense. After a while, the head of NASA decides to launch an unmanned rocket to the moon. The rocket is ready in a few hours, and everyone is awaiting orders. 3, 2, 1, blast off! The rocket soars in the air and approaches the moon. It exits the Earth's atmosphere and travels at full speed in that direction. After a day or two, everyone gets live footage of the giant moon. According to the studies, the rocket can't be too close to the moon since it may have a stronger gravitational pull. However, the footage shows that tiny particles are floating around it, similar to Saturn's rings. These rings look like a giant disk surrounding the large planet, but up close, they're just particles that are the size of rice grains to the extent of a large bus. They're orbiting Saturn because of the gravitational pull. The images show that these particles are big and small, which doesn't make it safe for the rocket to get any closer. So it suspends itself nearby to orbit the moon and unleashes a mini-rocket that looks like a drone to get closer. The particles are many miles thick, making it difficult for the mini-rocket to maneuver. It flies closer and the particles start crashing on it. It's a good thing that the mini-rocket is durable for this. The rocket finally gets past the particles and lands on the moon. Gravity has gotten stronger since it inflated in size, which almost broke the rocket. As soon as it lands, another robot pulls out and starts driving around the surface, trying to get some clues. As of now, nothing is happening. 
but they're noticing some quivers coming from deep inside the moon. The moon's core is reacting abnormally. It looks like it's getting bigger and bigger. Scientists don't know if it will stop growing at a certain point, so the only way to find out is to drill a hole deep inside to uncover the reason. You're pedaling away and reach the other side of the mountain. The ground is shaking, and your balance is getting worse. You look across the mountain and see that the whole other side of town is flooded. You get your raft and supplies and make it there. You find a rowboat and paddle as fast as you can until you reach the lighthouse. From there, you can try to find the NASA station. Suddenly, you see a large rocket erupt from the ground and into the sky. You know for a fact that your brother is there, working. But cellular networks are down. You paddle your way there for safety. The little rocket that landed unleashes a small drill strong enough to go miles to the center. It'll take days for it to reach down. So NASA is already launching another rocket to fly off and bring a bigger drill. The only problem is that the moon is getting bigger, so the particles around the moon also gather a lot more. The moon is reaching the Earth's size, getting bigger by the minute. The flood could reach several coastal states, and many micro-islands could be submerged, so it needs to be prevented. Gravity could affect the structure of most of the buildings, causing them to collapse one by one. But the little robot will not let that happen, so he's drilling to figure out what's going on with the moon. Some of the rocks appear to be getting hotter as it digs. This could be a sign of the moon expanding, which might ultimately explode. The scientists in the room are baffled and don't know what to do. The lead scientist, who is your brother, calls you, but he can't reach you. Meanwhile, you're still paddling around, trying to get to NASA. On your way, you head back to the mountains to stay on dry land. When you arrive back at the old cabin, you see some strange men wearing trench coats looking for you. There's a stare-off until they chase you. They seem odd, like they're not from Earth. The drill has reached its maximum depth and can't go down any longer. Also, the control transmission is getting weaker. Suddenly, a figure pops out of nowhere and flashes its lights on the robot. The transmission chops and only show little snippets of the giant figure eyeing the robot. A little creature descends from the figure and walks toward the robot. Everyone at NASA is freaking out and recording every single frame. No one can believe what's going on. After a while, the creature transmits a signal that NASA can't decipher. But the creature seems friendly. The creature gets back into its ship and in an instant disappears into thin air as it teleports away. The moon starts shrinking. It's getting back to its normal size. Everyone celebrates in NASA and around the world. The currents become calmer and retreat to the coast. It's a good thing everyone reached the higher hills before. The large ball of fire thousands of miles away from us is the brightest object in our solar system, as well as the biggest. If Jupiter was the size of a basketball, then the Earth would look like a tiny little grape. But the Sun makes even Jupiter look like a joke. That big burning ball in the sky is made up of hydrogen and helium and is 864,000 miles in diameter, making it more than 100 times wider than our little blue planet. It's 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit just on the surface, and 27 million degrees at the core. The Moon, on the other hand, is a little easier to grasp at at around 2,160 miles in diameter, which is only less than a third of Earth. It might seem pretty big floating in the sky, but that's because it's the closest object to us. But what if the tables, or in this case, celestial bodies, have turned, and the moon suddenly became brighter than the sun? Let's explore several scenarios. Scenario 1. If the moon becomes brighter than the sun, the nights will be brighter than days. It means your sleep cycle will be disrupted. All nocturnal animals will be utterly confused. When is it time to go out and eat now? In the extreme north and south poles, the nights and days are for months on end. So people living in the area already have an idea of what it's like to sleep at 11 p.m. with the sun shining brightly above them. For the rest of us, it won't be easy. Let's say you're out camping and prepare an awesome meal and gear up for the dark nights. As you trek into the forest, you find a spot that has an awesome view of the lake and the clear sky above. 
It's 7 p.m. and you start a fire for some s'mores and get the telescope ready. The only problem is that when the sun begins to set, the moon lights up the sky even brighter. It's surprisingly not as hot as you'd imagine, since it's not direct sunlight. But regardless, it's still pretty hot. Scenario 2. Temperatures will surely rise either way. That means snow will melt away faster than you can go. What? What's going on? The snow on the mountains will be the first to melt, followed by the polar caps. With so much heat, the sea levels will rise and take small remote islands scattered across the ocean underwater. Coastal towns will go down and everyone will live closer inward. This will likely cause a chain reaction in the world economy. There will be no more winters, which means no more winter activities like skiing, snowboarding, or snow fights. Animals and plants all around the world will be affected. The world will turn into a large desert. Water will get scarce over the years, but people will find a way to preserve it. Scenario 3. You're sitting behind your desk, bored. You're losing business. People aren't buying as many sunglasses as you thought. But when the moon suddenly becomes brighter than the sun, and everyone needs to wear those glasses 24-7 when heading outside. You can't keep up with the demand for sunglasses, so you hire more people and grow your business. You eventually become the best sunglasses business in the country. They don't recommend looking up at the sky at any point of the day or night. Cities are covered with large visors to reduce the brightness every day. Sunglasses will come in different sizes and shapes for different times of the day. Some will be like goggles strapped around your head, while others will be like large helmets. Scenario 4. The moon's atmosphere is so thin that it can't contain anything in it. Just like over deserts on Earth, there are no clouds to bring some rain, which is why it's always hot or cold. Yeah, the biggest desert in the world is the whole continent of Antarctica, which is a cold, barren desert, contrary to what people think of the Sahara Desert. So, if you still want to land on the moon, you better think twice now. People who are working at the International Space Station will have to find a new office. The moon will be too bright to bear, considering how close they are. If the moon is just brighter than the sun without the heat part, then the space station will only require adjustments to keep the light out. The reason why we see the moon in various shapes is because of its position in relation to the sun. The moon doesn't rotate, unlike Earth. It's kind of glued to us and is always showing the same side. So, depending on the moon's position during the month, we'll have a super bright night during the full moon and relatively shiny nights during the rest of the month. Scenario 5. If the moon became brighter than the sun, it would produce more heat than the sun and probably become larger. Gravity on Earth would change significantly because of the moon's new size. The whole orbit structure would change and affect the celestial objects floating in space. Planets would soon begin to orbit around the moon. Earth might move further away from the sun. If that happened, then everything would have to readjust to the radical changes in gravity. Weak gravity means buildings wouldn't have a solid foundation to sit on and would eventually collapse. Bridges and large monuments would also fail to hold up. People wouldn't be able to walk properly and would do it in a funny way. Scenario 6. In many of these scenarios, I mentioned how the moon would be brighter than the object emitting light, but in this case, the sun would have to come from the moon reflecting from the sun, which means that the sun would have to be twice as bright as it is now. If the sun got 100 times bigger, it would shoot out more rays, which can be damaging and throw off a lot of radiation, harmful to every living thing on Earth. The gravitational pull of the sun might attract more planets to orbit around it and cause other objects in space to join the orbit. The planets would be partying in our galaxy club, and we might be thrown off our orbit course. Of course, this would pose a bigger risk to everything on Earth as things would get hotter and drier than before. Scenario 7. If we're talking about the moon getting brighter, we can also assume it would get closer to Earth than it is now. The brightness won't be the problem here, as gravity will cause major changes on Earth. But every day, 24-7 will be high tide. It will be so extreme that there will be constant floods in every coastal town. All islands will be submerged, which will increase the population of inland cities. Marine life will be having the time of its life when water overtakes the land. Boats will have to be re-engineered for new conditions as well as submarines. 
air travel will be the priority, but large cruise ships will look futuristic and have an extra build to sustain the harsh waves. Nighttime will be pretty bright on regular days. It will raise the global temperature, which will melt down the snow, causing the sea levels to increase even more. Comets and other celestial objects will be drawn to a closer gravitational pull, so we will always have to look up whenever we go outside. But no worries, the moon is still up there as it is for a very long time. The Earth and the moon's relationship is complicated. Luckily, we only have one natural satellite. Other planets in our solar system have multiple moons revolving around them. Some are so huge that they're the size of Earth. Imagine several of those affecting our home, but that's a topic for a completely different story. The moon. A beautiful, natural satellite with some mysterious dark splotches. We always see only one side of it, so we're used to this image. It's hard to imagine the moon looking any other way. But it used to be different. Oh ho ho, it used to be so different. Picture this, a huge incandescent satellite in the sky that is causing constant tsunamis. I suggest we go very far into the past to see what the moon was like many, many years ago. The moon formed around 4.5 billion years ago. At that time, our green-blue planet was still a red-hot, insanely unstable piece of rock flying in space. We didn't have the moon yet, and a day on our planet only lasted six hours, which meant only three hours of daylight. Volcanoes erupted all over the place, releasing poisonous gas into the air, and a bunch of meteorites regularly crashed into the planet. At the same time, 4.5 billion years ago, the so-called Big Splash occurred, or as scientists call it, the Giant Impact Hypothesis. It claims that once an object the size of Mars crashed into Earth. Mars is about two times as small as our planet, so the blow wasn't too bad, but it was quite catastrophic. This powerful impact tore off part of the outer layers of that Mars-sized object and Earth. The very core of this space body merged with Earth's own dense core, and a huge number of fragments of Earth flew into outer space. So, this was the beginning of our moon, or, saying in a scientific way, the process of differentiation has begun. This is the process all planetary bodies go through at the beginning of their lives. Since the impact was very hot, its heat carried away most of the gases and liquids from the broken pieces of Earth. Only a relatively dry stone surface remained. So yeah, there is water and gases on the Moon, but in very small quantities. The gravity of our planet was strong enough to make all these hot stone fragments stay in its orbit, and they gradually began to stick together. The chemicals they contained were distributed in layers. Iron, which was heavier, sank deeper inside, and lighter elements formed the surface. In a short time, a hundred years or less, the ring of steam, dust, and molten rock fused together. The largest clusters with the strongest gravity attracted more and more particles, gradually forming the moon. It looked like a red-hot bubble ball. Sadly, the nucleus of this newborn moon turned out to be very small. It lacked iron and other heavy elements to form into something substantial, like a planet. The oldest rocks of the moon probably formed in the ocean of magma. And when the moon gradually cooled down, it turned out to be a white, clean, and perfectly even ball. But it was still completely different from what we have now. To begin with, immediately after its birth, the satellite was located at a distance of only 13,500 miles away from Earth. This is 15 times closer than it is now, around 238,000 miles. It's scary to imagine how huge and bright the moon looked in the sky at that moment. The view was probably both beautiful and terrifying. And, of course, such proximity caused incredibly huge waves on Earth. The planet experienced regular tsunamis. Also, at that time, the moon was spinning very fast, and it wasn't turned to Earth with only one side. But, in general, Earth and the moon had a positive impact on each other. For example, it was the moon that made our day last 24 hours. Now, Earth's axis is mostly tilted 23.5 degrees from the plane of its orbit around the Sun. Without the moon, 
Earth rotated rapidly, but thanks to the satellite, the planet's tilt stabilized, which led to a wide and pleasant variety of climates on Earth. To be fair, the gravity of our planet also helped the Moon. Thanks to it, the Moon began to rotate more and more slowly while gradually moving away from us. Over the years, its orbit has moved far away from our planet. At the same time, the Moon became tidally locked to Earth. This means that its rotation period coincides with its orbital period. Or, in other words, the Moon moves around itself as fast as it moves around the Earth. That's why the Moon always faces our planet with only one side. When the Moon moved away, tides on Earth became calmer. Now, water could flow to the most remote corners of our planet. It was then that life appeared on Earth. But back to the evolution of the Moon itself. What was happening on its surface after its formation? The next stages of the Moon's development were childhood and adolescence. And as is usually the case at this stage, this period was insane. No wonder, about 4 billion years ago, the solar system was going crazy. During the first 600 million years of the Moon's existence, large asteroids and comets constantly collided with it. Now, they were bothering not only our Earth, but also its satellite. These impacts were the most powerful in the history of the Moon. They left many large craters, which were later filled with dark rock. So, Earth wasn't enough for you, huh, space? Once, a dwarf planet crashed into the Moon. It was about the size of Ceres, the largest object in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. This explosion formed the SPA basin and also forever changed the appearance of the Moon. Can you see that dark spot on the far side of the Moon? Right there in this very south? This spot is called the South Pole Aitken Basin. Its diameter is about 1,600 miles. And yes, it was formed by the impact I've mentioned about 4.3 billion years ago. This planet brought with it a bunch of complex and strange chemical compounds that scientists are now finding all over the far surface of the Moon. These compounds began to emit a lot of heat, melted part of the lunar mantle, and, oops, accidentally woke up volcanoes. The volcanoes began to erupt furiously. A huge amount of magma was distributed over the surface of the Moon. Many years later, it cooled down leaving behind those famous dark splotches that we're so used to. They're called the Lunar Maria. There are much fewer craters there than on the lunar highlands. But for the last billion years, the Moon has been geologically inactive, except for occasional collisions with meteorites. In general, the appearance of the Moon changed forever as a result of these events, and, battered and tired, it entered adulthood. But even then, it couldn't get any peace a bunch of meteorites decided to bother it again. Honestly, it wasn't that bad. There were many collisions, but all of them were quite small. They just left a bunch of craters and pits on the moon and maybe damaged its mantle a little. Some of the collisions deepened already existing large craters. The moon's crust was getting thinner and thinner over the years because of all the chaos going on. And now, we call this upper part of the lunar crust, covered with craters, the lunar highlands. All those white and bright areas of the moon? The highlands! But, in the end, the universe finally calmed down. For now, at least. And the moon began to look the way it does today. There are still many things we don't know about Earth's natural satellite. There are moments in its history that scientists still can't accurately explain. But they're continuing to study our beautiful satellite. The data about the Moon is useful to people not only for its own sake. It gives us a more complete picture of both the history of our solar system and space as a whole. So, let's hope that one day we'll be able to find out everything there is to know about the Moon.